This year was a tough year for Nasir Little, and honestly, this video is going to be tough for me to make. But before we talk about Nas, I'd like to thank this video sponsor, Bet Online. You can use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B O E A V, for a 50% reward bonus over on Bet Online. They got tons of fun different ways for you to bet on all your favorite sports. You can get in on NBA playoff action, or NHL playoff action, or the brand new MLB season, or whatever you want over at betonline.ag with that promo code believe now let's get into the video so nasir little had a lot of hype going into last season here was some of the things i said in his preview video he got drafted with the 25th pick back in 2019 which was actually the first live stream that we ever did on this channel he's a great athlete who can attack the rim and finish strong while providing just enough three-point ability but not enough consistency in that regard meanwhile he was really good on the ball showcasing the ability to to potentially be a lockdown on ball defender but then he had his struggles off the ball but that could be chalked up due to the rest of the guys around him who also struggled off the ball defensively last year Nas's shooting splits vary more wildly than your typical nba player and the flashes are very encouraging but Nasir little has to find consistency this season for the portland trailblazers and that is the theme for him he has all the ability in the world both as an athlete and as a basketball player it's just finding that consistent level of production that can be relied upon night in, night out. Now let's see if he lived up to the hype. As we always do in these previews, we're going to start with the stats from this previous season. Nasir Little averaged 6.6 .6 points, 2.6 rebounds, and under an assist, steal, turnover, and block per game. He didn't play that much, only 18 minutes, and played 54 games. He did miss some time due to a hip injury, and injuries have unfortunately been a common theme for him. As far as the goals went, I wanted to see him score 14 points per 36 minutes. He failed to achieve that. I also wanted to see him get approximately eight rebounds per 36 minutes he was a shade under that at 7.8 last year so i wanted to see him slightly improve but instead he only averaged 5.2 I wanted to see him get two assists per 36. He was a hair short of that. I also wanted to see him get 1.3 steals and he barely got half of that at 0.7. And I also wanted him to do a good job taking care of the ball. I had a goal of a 1.8 to one assist to turnover ratio and that only ended up at 1.4 to one. Overall, statistically, it was a subpar season for Nasir Little. Now let's take a look at the efficiency, which was okay. I did have a goal of 58% on two pointers for Nas. For context, he shot 58.4% from two last year and 57.5% from two the year before. So my goal was right in between those two numbers. Unfortunately, that declined. He only shot 52.4%. I also had a goal of 35% on three point shots and he did surpass that shooting 36.7%. Overall, his efficiency was a bit below average with a true shooting percentage of 55.5. Now let's take a look at the positives. The first positive is his three point shooting has Nas of course passed the three-point shooting goal i had for him his shot was a bit inconsistent this year we'll talk about that but overall for a season it was nice to see him shoot close to 37 percent the second positive was his finishing as he shot 71 percent from zero to three feet the reason his two-point percentage regressed this season was due to inefficiency from the mid-range as well as a high diet of shots from the mid-range and although Nas finished well at the rim he didn't get there as much he only shot 19 percent of his field goals from there down from 28 percent last year the third positive was Nas's cutting i think he could have made an effort to cut a little bit more and when he did cut that was when he got some of his finishes around the rim i still think Nas is a plus as a cutter now let's get into the negatives and before i list these honestly it does suck to be listing so many i have six on this list i'll talk a bit more about my feelings on this or little as a player after this segment it's just unfortunate because i truly do root for the guy but i have to be honest and there's a lot of things that were negative this year the first of which is his injuries slash athletic decline he did not look like the same athlete as he has in prior seasons this year and i'm starting to wonder if it's all the injuries that are adding up nasir little always seems to be banged up with some sort of injury some sort of ailment and i was hopeful to see him potentially play a whole nba season this year he unfortunately couldn't make it through the entire nba season dealing with a hip injury that kept him out for about six weeks and he did end up playing 54 games which was a career high i wanted to see if he could at least reach the 50 games 
game threshold. He did get there, but he barely got there. Still ended up being banged up for a good part of this year, and his athleticism seems to have waned with that. He also just had surgery recently on his core muscle, which he had surgery on last offseason, so it still seems to be bothering him. Maybe if he can get that fixed, he can get back to being the same athlete he used to be, so maybe that's signs for optimism, I guess, but it just sucks that he hasn't had a true chance to develop due in part to his body somewhat failing him. So I'm hoping that he can find some sort of health in the future. The second negative, and this goes with some of that athletic decline, and that is his overall defense. Last season, he was a positive on-ball defender and a negative off-ball defender. And I was hopeful that if he just improved his team defense, his off-ball defense, his off-ball awareness, that Nasir Little could become a positive defender for this Trailblazer team. However, it swayed the other way. That didn't really improve, and his on-ball defense regressed. He became a guy that was getting blown by some mediocre role players off the dribble, where a season before, he had moments where he was locking up some of the best offensive players in the league. So to see his on-ball defense regress and him just become an all-around negative defender was very, very disappointing for me to see. The third negative, and this could also be due to some athletic decline or injuries plaguing him, is the decline in his rebounding was very strange to see. As I said, he averaged 7.8 rebounds per 36 minutes last season. This season, that went all the way down to 5.2. It was a clear-cut positive going into the season. Now, it's just an okay skill of his. His rebounding in general is not a negative for a small forward, but the decline from it being a clear-cut positive to where it is at now is worrisome. And that decline in itself is definitely a negative. The fourth negative is his offensive consistency. Nasir Little has always struggled consistently staying on the court, but when he has played, he's also struggled consistently shooting the ball and scoring the ball. I was making a point to look at his three-point shooting percentage by month, and this year he was more consistent than in previous years. In October in six games, he shot 38.5%. In November, he shot 36.7%. In January, he shot 60% in eight games. In February, 36.4%. So he was good up until that point. But then in March, a month in which he shot the most three-point attempts of any singular month, shooting 46 of them, he only made 11, which is good for 23.9%. Nasir Little's jump shot fell off a cliff at the end of the year and his three-point percentage before and after the all-star break is telling of that he shot 39.6 percent before the all-star break he was around 40 percent to start the year especially as we got into january but then after the all-star break he shot 32.3 percent so this was some of the inconsistency that we had always talked about but he was also inconsistent in terms of his decision making attacking off the dribble and so forth and just as an interesting nugget that probably doesn't mean anything at all. He seems to not like the middle of the week. On Tuesdays, he shot 7.7% from three, and on Wednesdays, he shot 19.4% from three. So, uh, yeah, just don't give him three-point shots on a Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, that it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. I just thought that was a interesting statistical anomaly. But regardless, all jokes aside, he still needs to find more consistency as a shooter. Now, shooters have their highs and their lows. Even the best shooters in the world go on hot streaks and get into slumps and this year he was a little bit more consistent of a shooter however still didn't find full consistency with his form he was off balance a lot of times when he was struggling he would kick his legs out violently at times when he was struggling his shot would end up being flat when he was missing the arc changed on it i still don't think his form is truly consistent and i don't know why that is he came into the league with a hitch in his jump shot and he eliminated that in the past four years or so but you have to wonder how natural it was for him to have that hitch and how much of it is still not natural for him to shoot the way he's shooting i don't know it's just crazy how inconsistent his form is because when his form styled in he's a pretty dang good shooter but it's not always dialed in the fifth negative was a self-creation and Nasir Little was never much of a self-creator during his career so far in Portland but this year it seemed to decline a little bit more he just seemed to have a little bit less burst off the dribble and I still haven't seen the development in his shiftiness off the bounce and his ball handling to have faith in him becoming a self-creator now hopefully 
he can regain some of the athleticism he came into the league with because he was a guy that was powerful enough and quick enough to maybe straight line drive past guys in certain situations but he even seems to have lost that he still have his moments for sure but as a self-creator he was really lacking this year and the sixth negative is his overall playmaking especially with his passing and creation for others he lacked in that department as well this year in my opinion so let me talk about the future for Nasir Little because he is starting a new contract making approximately seven million dollars a year he'll be making 6.2 million next year and that goes up over the course of the four-year contract so he does have a place on the team next year if the blazers don't trade him however with the blazers lack of mid-tier salary chips i expect nasir little to be a salary matcher this offseason and end up getting traded somewhere for what I don't know, but that $6.2 million contract is salary that can be used to match a bigger player in conjunction with other smaller contracts such as a Kevin Knox, Keon Johnson, etc. If he doesn't get traded, I do expect Nasir Little to be back on the team. There's no way the Blazers are going to waive him when he's starting a brand new four-year $28 million contract. We thought it was a bargain at the time he signed it. However, at this point, you have to question if it is a good contract because given his production last year it's hard to say anything above a minimum is a good contract for Nasir Little unfortunately before we talk about what I think he needs to work on our first live stream ever on this channel was when the Blazers drafted Nasir Little and me and Eric were extremely excited to have a chance at developing a guy who was a highly touted high school prospect who struggled a little bit in college, but didn't get a chance to start for the most part at UNC. And then the Blazers were able to take him at 25. Being able to get a guy with athleticism and flashes of skill was very exciting. And it's just unfortunate to see how Nasir Little's career has played out so far. He's still barely 23 years of age, so he still has time to figure it out. He has a new four-year contract to give him some security. He's a great guy and a player who has shown flashes of being a good NBA player, has shown different things at times during his career. And that's what makes it tougher to sit here and acknowledge the season he had because statistically and off the eye test, he just really struggled and did not look like an NBA player this year. And some guys, it's easier for me to to sit up here and say yeah they didn't get the job done they struggled with Nasir Little it's especially hard I'm hopeful that he can figure out a way to turn it around maybe the court issue plagued him this year and that was why he declined in a number of statistical areas regardless it's just tough to see how Little's career has panned out so far with that said let's grade him for this season and I have to give him a grade of a D I was expecting a little bit more from Nasir Little this year. Now, I wasn't super high on him like a lot of other Blazer fans were. Nasir Little had a ton of hype going into last season, but still, he didn't even meet my expectations, and given his decline in other areas, I gotta give him a D. This is the best grade I can honestly give him. Let me know what you would grade Nas down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of his future as a Portland Trail Blazer. Do you think he should be given a chance to be in the rotation next year, or do you think it's time for Portland to move on from him? Do you think he needs a change of scenery let me know down in the comment section i'm extremely interested to hear what you guys have to say regarding nasir little anyway with that being said there's probably going to be another player review later on tonight so stay tuned for that there is a playlist link for player review videos that i've already dropped down in the description box below once again thank you to bet online for sponsoring this video and i am out of here i'll catch you in the next one until then as always peace out go blazers